and what you're going to do about it. Huh? Morning. Good morning, BBs. It's too early. Sure is. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. What you got there, Anthony? Oh, is that... I noticed your laptop's not on the desk for for the show today. Um, wow. It's one of those times I wish I had like a a second camera. I'm business. Let's just let's just take a photo. <laughs> Don't worry everyone. I'm business. Okay photo acquired i'll post it in the discord later um anthony what is that sage it's time for me to get my life together and so now i'm an organized businessman i'm very professional you know pixel circus is taking off and we've got a lot of responsibilities uh-huh and i'm a I'm, i just had my i just had my birthday I'm 21 years old now, and it's time to it's time to b become a serious adult. Yeah. And so I did what serious adults do, and I got myself a a, a Palm Pilot. Oh, oh. I'm a business now. I also got a fold out keyboard for productivity. I see. That. <laughs> um, can you play Doom on that? No. It's not for that Sage. Like this is for this is for spreadsheets. Is it? Can you even get a Google Google sheet on that? No, you can't get online with it. Okay. You have to hook it up to a computer, download your emails to it, and then read them on the go, and then you can reply, but then it holds on to your replies until the next time you're at a computer. Now, wouldn't that mean you could just Answer your emails while you're at your computer. You have to make the best use of every moment. No downtime. I think you're girl bossing a little too close to the sun, Anthony. Did you just call me a girl boss? Thank you. <laughs> it's me, a real business. You know, some people don't really get it. Some people don't understand the business life, but I do. I do. I'm making deals, Sage. Yeah? All the time. Hey, that's free real estate. Nice. Just fucking fuck the mic, honestly. Honestly, fuck it. I'm punching the mic for both of us today. Um, uh, you're getting a lot of compliments on your shirt, Anthony. Nice shirt. Thank you. Uh, my best friend got it for me. It's me. I'm his best friend. I got it for him. <laughs> Real Garfield girls are born in March. Is he born in March? No. No. His birthday just happened while we were away. I'm on a Tuesday. I'm a real Garfield girl. My friend. My friend Rob got me that very good 22-year-old business organizer because he gets me. He knows you very well. It's going to go in the drawer next to my iPod mini and my mini disc players. Perfect. Well, I know that that seemed like the most important news of the day, but we do have other news to Goodbye. get into. Goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for getting up and uh, hanging out for the news today. Let's start off. Let's start off really with just a big, some unbelievable mind-blowing news. Hey, those mad lads at Nintendo Sage, they did it. They did it. Can we get, can everybody stand up please for Nintendo? People said it, people said it wasn't possible. People said that you can't put Bluetooth audio in a portable device. They said there's no way to do it. And Nintendo said, we we that. made kickle cubicle. We can do anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they put 
Bluetooth audio into the Nintendo Switch, Sage. Congratulations, Nintendo, on this groundbreaking move in technology. I hope they have patents on this shit. I hope they do, too. Because the second people figure out that you can have wireless Bluetooth audio on portable devices... It's over for these hoes, as they say. It's over! It's over! You know how Nintendo's always saying, it's over for these hoes? Don't listen. Don't listen to what I'm saying right now, sweetheart. You don't need Bluetooth That's audio. Hose. You don't need any audio at all. No audio? None? It has a little beep. Like a little game? Like not even it like a do a little beep, like thank you. Game Boy dial of it's audio? It's not about that. It's for business. It it's just like the Switch. It doesn't need audio because it's for business. <laughs> Well, uh, the Switch does now have Bluetooth. Four and a half years after launch, they said, you know what would be a really good idea? F turn on that Bluetooth we've had in there for four years <laughs> for anything except Joy-Cons. Because, like, here's the thing. Obviously, they had wireless connectivity. That's how your Joy-Cons connect. But Joy-Cons are wireless? <laughs> I've been... I've been putting it in the dock and playing it like this. Where it's up the, the Joy-Cons come off? Hard to believe I know. This just, dude, Nintendo's changing the game all over the place today. The fact that they've had this in there and they were just like, but you can't have, like, wireless headphones. That seems complicated. It seems very complicated. I'll tell you what, and uh, people are talking about it, and they're saying, if you bought a Bluetooth dongle... Maybe keep using your dongle if you bought one of those low-latency Bluetooth good. dongles. Oh, no. It's apparently not the greatest. But, you know, like we said, this is a brand new technology. And Nintendo will figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only been 4.5 years. Mm -hmm. only, four, only a measly 4.5. See, non-business people would have said 4.5. Mm -hmm. But I need to be specific about my figures now. 4.5. It's 4.5. Uh-huh. Because I, do, because I do business, mobile business now. Business time. Uh, another auspicious day for Nintendo. Definitely want to start, start off with this, as we are a GameCube house. We are a GameCube house. We love the GameCube in this house. Uh, the GameCube is 20 years old. I, the GameCube and I have the same birthday, if you count the Japanese release and not the North American release. North American, okay. North America... GameCube's not twenty one or not twenty years old for us until November. It's, it's oh yeah? Yeah. Is it just a few months? It's just a I few months. We almost had a year. Interesting. No, November two thousand one was the release of the GameCube. And baby, it's still a great console. I still love the GameCube so much. Oh, it's the best console of all time. See, I'm not gonna s I can't say that because I we know I don't believe it. I believe it. But I wanted you to say it. I believe it. I think that the GameCube was the greatest console ever made. Do I think that it was the greatest feat in technology? No. That's no, silly. Of that's not what not. it's about. It had the best game releases on it. It had the best controller, in my opinion. It looked like a fun little lunchbox with a handle that you take to your was. friends. You take it to a friend's house and you play GameCube. It's exactly the right size. It had, as far as consoles go to, like it wasn't without its tech hiccups, but it was pretty low on tech hiccups. At the in time. In comparison to like PlayStations at the time. At the time, I remember a lot of people being like, oh, GameCube. Like we were still, 2001, we were still doing a lot of shooty shooty bloom light brown. You know what I mean? Like that's what games were. And uh, we were still proving to ourselves that games were for grownups. And, uh, a lot of people were like down on the GameCube, but the thing is, technologically, that might be the last generation where Nintendo didn't just compete, but actually beat the competition in some ways. I would put GameCube graphics up against Xbox graphics any day of the week. Yeah. I any day so. of the week. It's just different. It's just different art direction. It is completely different art direction, but it doesn't make it of lower quality. Uh, it was definitely cartoonier in look, but in clarity and in oh. actual quality. Ah! It's F Zero GX best F Zero, uh, w Wind Waker still my probably well it's it goes back and forth from day to day whether mm -hmm. it's my favorite Zelda or not. Uh, Smash Brothers Melee, fucking huge Mario Kart Double Dash, Ugh. 
Still best Mario Kart in my opinion. Yeah, Double Dash and Melee are the best of those two games. Oh yeah, I think it goes Double Dash and then uh, Mario Kart DS for me. Interesting. Those are my two faves. Yeah, I played Mario Kart DS. Uh, yeah, I mean people people like the new Mario Kart. It's amazing. Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. Pikmin. Pikmin 2. Rogue Leader. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Harvest Moon. For, you know, it's it's just so good. It's just so good. The Paper fuck? Mario? Paper Mario. Paper Mario, what was that, Thousand Year Door? Thousand, Thousand Year Door. Thousand Year Door, best Mario RPG. Mm-hmm. It's... It's such a good console. So many classics. I've just, I've been replaying the original Luigi's Mansion recently. Yeah? And it's so it's still so fucking good. It's so good. I love the GameCube so much. Same. I even loved all the weird Nintendo-y stuff about it. I had the link cable for my GBA. Me too. I went to the Bug Island and I got of good bugs. Of course we did. I used a Tingle Tuner. In oh, Wind Waker. Great. I didn't have a Tingle Tuner. Oh, a Tingle Tuner. But I very much had a link cable to my, uh, I used it on my Game Boy Advance and then my Game Boy SP. Oh, God. Because it spanned the time of both. Listen. I love the Game Boy SP. Do you hear it when you say it? When you say Game Boy SP, do you hear it? The. I am a bigger fan of the Candy Bar GBA. Mm. I like that form factor. But we've talked about this before. The SP felt like such a prestigious piece of electronics yeah i think the gba as like just a fully formed human that could choose what shape of thing i want to play mm -hmm. i agree the gba was better in your hand but it's the sound of the sp it was you had it a was, flip it was like you had an adult piece of electronics yeah it was like having a flip phone and it came in silver so because cool. it was serious i mean it was listen sometimes games is games but they can also be just like a little bit of business you know, just like this Palm Pilot is a little bit of fun, right? It's clear electronics. Um, four players. They had they had that Pac Man game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Where the where the ghosts were looking at their GBA mm -hmm. screens, and Pac Man yeah. was on the main screen. I, Wario we played, World. We played Crystal Chronicles, and that was hard to play. Oh God, Wario World. That's a treasure game. Treasure made. A game for Nintendo, and it was Wario World, and it was one of the best fucking action it awesome. platformers. It was awesome. It was so amazing. The GameCube at 20 years old. Here's the thing: we know that I'm a Dreamcast boy. I'll live and die by the Dreamcast. Sure. But if I'm if I I'm my Dreamcast too. Yeah. If I'm looking at, if I'm just looking at the consoles objectively, there's no way I can't give it to the GameCube. The Dreamcast just is a is a part of my life. Yeah. But the GameCube is such a good console. Twenty years. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday GameCube. Game oh, I see what we did. Happy uh, birthday. I'm gonna put Game the GameCube's Cube. birthday in my Palm Happy Pilot so I remember it every year from now on. Um, there are two things that I people want to are, find out. That people Harry are leaving. Said. Yeah, people are leaving their favorites and their stuff about the GameCube here. I love I, that we're all in it. One thing first, I have is this world-renowned dongle expert and birthday boy Anthony Carboni. I hope the day was special, gamer. Uh, my gamer. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> Friday, my gamer. Thank you, Harry. And, and Harry, we're gonna be hanging out on Sunday. We're uh, we're doing one time on the internet. It's true. He's uh, guesting on one time on the internet this Sunday. Yeah, right um, here on this very channel. So be sure to uh, be sure to sub here and, or follow here and do all the things if you haven't yet. Be sure to just hand us money and be here on Sunday. Uh, Harry also said it seemed like Nintendo was really exploring new IP at the time. Is it me or have they just stopped lately? I think that most of I think a lot of big companies have just kind of reverted to. We'll just continue making the things off the IP we know is successful. Platform holders have offloaded that to third parties for the most part. Yeah. I think I think the difference would be, I mean, PlayStation is obviously doing a lot, uh, but I mean, no, yeah, PlayStation's still doing a lot with with new IP mm -hmm. uh, internally, uh, but you know, they are leaning heavily on the hits. I think I think. It's just business-wise, it's just smart. If you're a newer studio, you want something that's new and exciting that's going to grab people. But if you're an established studio now, what, what, it's it's just like Hollywood. With the cost of games mm -hmm. and the cost of uh, uh, you know just marketing and making a game these days, mm -hmm. 
you can see why people don't want to bank on new IP until they have to. But we wish they would. We wish they would. Nintendo. I mean, hey, we got ARMS. You know, competitive competitive fighting game ARMS. Come on. We're all really into ARMS. Right? They did it. I will say Wii U. Look, I'll say Wii U Splatoon, one of the best new IPs. I agree. One of the best I, new IPs I ever. I will agree with that. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more chances being taken. I think we all would. I think I think everybody's leaving that to the double A's and the indies these days. I noticed you googling something. Somebody had referenced it in chat. Somebody maybe referenced it in chat. The Game Boy Productivity Suite. Yes. The Game Boy Productivity could never, could never. But I'll tell you, you could put a Game Boy emulator on this and play it on these weird five buttons right here. And you will, won't you? I probably will. Of course you will. My my PDA has a cartridge slot. Can you put Game Boy games in it? You can't. I feel silly. But I do have a webcam for it <laughs> or a digital camera for it. It's terrible. Right. Um all right, let's get into what else is going on today. Uh, this was actually a few days ago, uh, but we're not letting it slide by without yelling about it, quite simply. A lot of new Star Wars game IP is coming soon. Uh, new and uh, uh, remade, recycled. Yep. Uh, but, one, baby. but one of the things that we're very excited for is the Switch exclusive, Switch and mobile exclusive, Star Wars Hunters, which is uh, kind of a team-based arena uh, combat shooting game. So is the trailer. Ooh! You know what I mean? Now this we we got a taste of this, a tease of this a little a little while back. Got her in my sights. Going in. Lose your team again, Reed. I love this. Take you on, Aaron. You'll have to do better than that. She's all yours, Graz. Graz. I love it. The this is the buffest Wookie. Ugh. Oh. Have you ever have you ever seen Black Kersantian from the comics? I feel like they were trying to reference Black Kersantian. Interesting. I love it. We love a we love a Jedi droid. A Two. Was in a trench coat and a tiny and a tiny little pig man, just like Nick, just like just like Nick Nolte's character in The Mandalorian, but in an old uh, droidica as a mech. I deeply relate to two Jawas in a trench coat. Can I tell you something? Two Jawas in a trench coat. Their name is Utuni. Utuni. These characters are so fun. I love this. I love how fun these characters are. I'm so stoked for this game. I, I listen. Obviously, I'm an I'm an Utuni main. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how any of these characters play. I have to. I have to be an Utuni main. Yeah. I uh, think I'll start there. I could end up at Droid Eye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Droid Eye is good. Jedi. I do like I do like the sort of uh, our little our little guy who's using a droidica as a mech suit. Um, for uh, those asking in the live studio audience, the game is called Star Wars Hunters. Star Wars Hunters, uh, and all we know is that it is going to be free to play on Switch, the uh, Android App Store at, or the iOS App Store and Google Play in 2022, uh, and it will not require a Nintendo Switch Online membership to download and play. So if you don't play for Switch online, if you don't pay for Switch online every year, you can just keep playing. Uh, this is going to be fun. This is something very different from from Star Wars, and I love seeing it. Yeah, they I did love something seeing really, it. Really, really different. You know, people can say what they want about Star Wars, where it's gone, the acquisition by Disney, but goddamn, am I so grateful to live 
in a time that something I love so much has been picked up and is getting so much content. So many opportunities for good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. That is a big win for me personally. And I like any time they decide to get they decide to get a little fun. You know what they I mean? Got, they got real fun with that. They got real fun. You know, you have your big releases like your like your Jedi Fallen Order. You know, we've got the Kotor remake coming out. You know, we have these things that take it like the ser- like serious lore and all that. But I love just having these little little side fun stuff. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. Uh, is it only multiplayer, or do we know if it has a campaign mode? I believe it is only multiplayer. I believe it's only multiplayer, but they're not giving any more details than basically what you just saw. Yeah, but what we've learned from like the free-to-play, mobile, cross-platform to Switch kind of games is a lot of the time it's focused on multiplayer. Yeah, I mean... They're... I think they want to get in the Fortnite arena. I, they absolutely do. You know, they may have, they may have like a... Uh, like a training story mode or something like that. I could yeah. see I could see fighting against bots just I to train. Maybe the characters will have little bits of story in there, but um, I wouldn't expect it until they say anything. Right now, I would just expect Agreed. two Jawas in a fucking trench coat. Did you see that Jawa? He held out his little hand, like like Luke calling to a saber, uh-huh. and the other Jawa threw the saber up from the bottom. It's awesome. I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Um, let's continue. Let's continue, uh, let's shall we? Talk about. I think it's been in the news a lot. Everybody's been talking about God of War. God of War, baby. Let's talk about God of War. That PlayStation, that PlayStation showcase. What the PlayStation showcase uh, showed off some more of that God of War, and of course the uh, the team has been making the press rounds mm-hmm. lately. Corey Balrog gave an interview recently where he mentioned something that uh, was very interesting. That uh, God of War is. Uh, ending the Norse story. It'll end the current storyline. Uh, and people were like, what? Why? I like it. It's mine. Mm-hmm. Why, Anthony? They said, if, uh, Corey said, if they did a trilogy, it would take like 15 years. And they just, the team didn't want to spend 15 years making a trilogy. <laughs> Yeah, and that makes sense. Like, I love that. I love that. I love the honest take on it. And I also love that, like, that team doesn't have to spend 15 years making a trilogy. Yeah. They'll be able to work on other projects and make other games. You could see them getting You could see them getting run down, you know? I, I would imagine that, like, after a certain amount of time, when you become one of those studios that's known, or one of those teams that's known for one thing, yeah, uh, you're kind of like, ugh. I guess I'm going back to the God of War factory to make another Norse god. Right. You know? Whereas, like, they're not saying they're not going to do another God of War Mm -hmm. immediately after this. Maybe the team will move on to a new God of War. But maybe it'll be different timeline, different setting, different style. And I like that. I like that they're keeping it fresh. Yeah. I think that that's really nice. I think that that's an honest approach to games that will make better games. I think that means that whatever they make next is hopefully something they actually want to be making. Yeah. Uh, Lee Green Griffin in the live studio audience says, imagine working on one thing for a full third of your professional lifespan. I mean, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Yeah. And it's nice It's nice that they're getting that freedom to kind of, you know, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, you know, you talk to people who are heads of giant teams, like on, on these long running franchises, you know, your things like your Assassin's Creed's and stuff like that. Right. And you're just like, Wow. You've been doing this for you've been doing this kind of game yeah. in this in this franchise for like fifteen years. I mean, Assassin's Creed, although it stays very similar in gameplay, at least it changes setting. Yeah, that's the thing. If they did a trilogy of this storyline, it would be the same setting. It would be the same um, mythology to follow. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, and it I also like thing to sit in for fifteen years. I also like the idea of like Kratos meeting up with these other pantheons. You yeah. Know? Like, that's fun. Yeah. Introduce us to the next story. Um, Ooh, can we get a Japanese mythology god of war? Love that. Ugh, we would love that. I'll tell you what. You want to make, make that big money right now, if you're thinking business-minded, which, which I am. Always. I mean, we're a business show. We're a business show. I have my street MBA, and I own a Palm Pilot now. You go with, uh, you go with Chinese mythology. Yeah. That's huge. If you can do that in a way, if you can do that in a way that doesn't make China unhappy, you've done something. And by China, I of course mean the oppressive Chinese government. 
Correct. Uh, if you can work within the oppressive Chinese government, you can have as much money as you want. Not an easy feat. Uh, uh, Arcane Archivist says, do we even have to stay with Kratos? Maybe time for a change. Hey, it could be Atreus. It could be Loki, right? Yeah. It could be anybody. Yeah, I be. think that those characters introduce us to somebody new. Mm -hmm. That would still obviously be staying within Norse mythology as opposed to splitting in an even further direction, but... I'd love to see Mimir keep like keep going. It's a great character. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about storied storied old franchises, mm -hmm. story old hardware today. Yeah. As a as a youth, I was a fan of the Wipeout series mm -hmm. of video games. Yeah, not the TV show, not the television series, which also made its own video games. I'm talking about the other Wipeout games. I'm talking about. True Rave Flyer Anti-Gravity Racing. Capital E. Capital E. Why? Because everything else is lowercase. And it was fucking Y2K aesthetic, baby. All right. Well, Wipeout Rush was just announced. I th a mobile Wipeout game. We thought Wipeout was dead. Mm -hmm. I thought Wipeout was dead. And most people... Weren't even wondering. I thought HD Fury, that's true. I thought HD Fury was going to be the last of it. They they gave it the PS5 polish and upgrade, and I thought they were just sending poor old Wipeout out to pasture. Yeah. Goodbye, anti-gravity racing. Goodbye, retro future aesthetic. And then they said, Wipeout Rush is coming, baby. And I said, Wipeout Rush? Fucking tell me more. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about it. And, and they did. And they did. They released a trailer to IGN. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's loud. Let's not. Yeah, it's it. loud. It's Y2K anti gravity yeah, racing. Music. We don't have that. Nope. Oh, this no isn't like this isn't licensed. Not risking it. Not risking it for wipeout. Um, I started watching the trailer and I went, "Wait a minute. What is? What? Is, wait a minute. You're not actually piloting these anti gravity ships. You." are watching it from a mobile perspective top down like a strategy game. And they they're trying not to show you that as much as possible in this trailer. <laughs> but they definitely showed it a lot in the beginning. They showed tapping on different cards which I would assume because this is a mobile game you have to unlock. Maybe you have to buy. Um yeah, it's a management sim. It's a management sim. Let me go back and show you what I'm talking about here. There it is. There it is. That's what it looks like as you're playing it. Now, no shade to the team that's developing this. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, they're doing their best. Yes, they're working hard. They're being as creative as they can within the within the outlines of the brief. Uh huh. They were told make a wipeout mobile game and make it play like a mobile game. Don't make it a racing game. Publisher Rogue Games uh, said, "If I want that visceral, immersive, intense racing experience, I'll find it waiting on PlayStation." No, you won't, because I'm still waiting. Where is it? There's no, there's no new Wipeout on PlayStation, Matt. But at the same time, we're delighted that we could rethink Wipeout for mobile and play with fun new mechanics and gorgeous visuals. Uh, we hope that fans will continue to come to it with an open mind. Although different, we are proud to bring Wipeout franchise back into focus with a fresh take on the formula. And we poured a lot of love into the presentation, which includes loads of iconic ships, tracks, and new comic book-inspired narrative, a fitting electronica soundtrack, and gorgeous visuals that run at 60 frames per second on modern hardware 60 frames per second management sim Ooh, baby i wonder if it'll run at 120 on that new iphone 13 you know so you can really see the card you're tapping i'm sorry i hate to sound like such a hater on this i'm sure they're doing something as creative like i said i know they're doing something as creative as they can it's just this is not what i want from wipeout no one wanted this from Wipeout and they know it they literally like in this thing they're like we hope that you'll approach it with an open mind because they know no one wants it <sighs> here's my here's my hot take on it I think 
franchise was dead and there was no plans to yeah. continue it. And I think that they were maybe offered a good amount of money to make it potentially. Sure. Or and they were like, I mean, we weren't going to make any more games anyways. So if this upsets people, the franchise is done anyways. Yeah. The reason I dislike something like that is often something like this will be used if it fails. Something like this will be used internally at Sony to say that there is no interest in Wipeout. But that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I think they would only do it if there was no yeah. plans to bring back Wipeout. <sighs> I think like, yeah. Or, you know, hey, maybe this team maybe this team makes this kind of game. Is and this so, the and team behind the original Wipeout? No, Road no. Games? No. So it was made by Cygnosis originally, which got okay. absorbed into Sony Studio Liverpool, which now no longer exists. So then, yeah, so, maybe it is just a skin on, uh, you know, a structure they had. Yeah, I think you know. Uh, yeah, it could be a, it could be a team that had this. Maybe they're Wipeout fans, and they really Matt Casamassina is the CEO of Rogue Games, and Matt Casamassina, that name sounds familiar. I think used to be a games writer, mm. or used to work at used to work in games like on the press side, um, and is probably a big Wipeout fan. And was maybe maybe made this presentation to Sony. It was like, we've got a cool idea for Wipeout. It doesn't need to be what you think it needs to be. Mm-hmm. We can do something cool for this on mobile. Uh, Matt Casamassina, Hot Beverages says yes. IGN, thank you, Hot Beverages. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew him from somewhere. Um, so you know, I want to give him all the benefit of uh, all the benefit in the world. Uh, but you know, it's just not what I want from Wipeout. No. It's going to be free to download. Like, you can tell it's going to be free to download. So oh, 100%. I'll, there will be microtransactions. I'll, I'll play it. There will be ads and microtransactions, most likely, like a free-to-play mobile game is. But... Yeah, so... Maybe it's for someone. I hope that it is. Uh, we're going to do one more piece of news on a game that nobody wanted. <laughs> that is Guardians of the Galaxy. We've talked about our feelings on Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, we wanted we, it, just not like this. We didn't want this. <laughs> we wanted something. We wanted something. We wanted something, but I can't say we wanted this no. at all. This is nowhere near what we wanted. So... With that in mind, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy game, of course, is set to release on October 26th. And uh, seeing that we've had a lot of delays, they have announced that they are very proud that their game is done early. They said, don't worry, we're ready. It's real easy to get your game all done and buttoned up when there's nothing new or interesting or unique about it. (laughs) It's almost like taking the easy route and not making it have multiple interesting characters you can play and instead just going with an alt-right star lord as your main character made it a little easier to release the game it's almost like they took the easy route on this game i just hmm. i just i still can't believe i still can't believe that uh, that they they were handed Guardians of the Galaxy, and at no point were they like, well, obviously, you get to play as all of these different characters. All of the things that makes Guardians of the Galaxy special? What if instead we made this third-person character action thing about a guy that about, about a guy that looks like a model that they that fucking Square Enix Montreal already had on a hard drive somewhere, and like, and added a little bit of that telltale spice to it? He's just got too much Hitler youth vibes for me. Yeah, he really does. I just, you I'm know. I'm sorry to whoever like mo capped that. It's not your fault. No, I mean, listen, the voice cast, when I listen to the voice cast is great. Mm-hmm. The mo capped actors are great. You know, and, and like you look at it and you're like, this is well engineered. This is a Square Enix game, right? But I just, what is, what is Square Enix's plans with this Marvel contract? The like, thing is, I want it to be so good. We love the Guardians of the Galaxy. What are the, I mean? We love Marvel, and honestly, we love a lot of Square Enix games. It's it's the fact that you know, I think Avengers was killed by the fact that Square Enix was like, this has to be a game as a service. Mm-hmm. You know, we paid so much for this license, we're paying so much to keep this game going. We have to. Uh, we have to make sure that it lasts for years and years and years. With this game, I'm wondering what their. I, I mean, I know what their. I know what their end game is. Their their goal 
is DLC campaigns for every possible character. That's their goal. Their goal is you start as Star-Lord, and in three months, we give you Gamora, Gamora for $20. Then we give you Rocket for twenty dollars, right? We want to we want to keep giving you this stuff, and keep charging for it because I don't know it's a big lucrative contract for us. And I think it was just I think it was just the wrong way to go. You know, obviously Insomniac has has a lot of protection being first party Sony mm -hmm. and a lot of freedom to do a little bit more of what about what they want, but like. Man, Square, I really feel like... We're getting horse armored. Yeah, I feel like sort of what, what happened at the launch of Battlefront 2, right? Where it's like, you've got something really good here. Mm -hmm. pull, back on, pull back on this loot crate stuff, and people will really love it. And by the time they did, it was too late. Yes. Um, I think we're going to run into that situation. Obviously, uh, Marvel's Avengers game also did not knock it out of the park. So they're running into a tough place right now with, with Marvel games. We're in a difficult, difficult spot right now. How many years was that contract? Was that a five-year contract? If that was a five-year contract, it's like TikTok, y'all. Yeah. TikTok, get a good game out. Yeah. I mean, and hey, maybe Guardians comes out, and I play it, and I'm floored, and it's better than the trailers, and I'm like, wow, they really actually did something interesting with this. I'm always open to that. But, you know, they've thrown out, they've thrown out two 20-minute gameplay chunks yeah. at this point. And it looked weak. It looked a little looked it, a little weak. Looked yeah. it looked a little underbaked. Yeah. It was a little underproved. Bit underproved. Like Star Lord. Underproved. Soggy bottom. It's got a soggy bottom. Star Lord definitely has a soggy totally. bottom. I'm writing that down. Yeah, right right Star Lord has a soggy bottom in your palm pilot. I have to do it a I have to do it a letter at a time using the palm graffiti system. Oh, you can't just like write in handwriting. That's why you get the keyboard. For real business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, moving on from that. Uh, While we're talking games, let's talk about Castlevania. Let's talk about Castlevania, one of my favorite franchises. We love Castlevania in this house. In all of history. Ugh. And some of the best Castlevania games that I think get the least amount of fucking respect put on their name mm -hmm. are the Game Boy Advance Castlevania games. Excellent games. Post Symphony of the Night, Game Boy Advance Castlevania could do no wrong. Circle of the Moon had that card system that was way too grindy. But other than that, mwah. and you know, last month we had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a rumor. A little bit of a something leaked. Uh, the Australia, a little bit of a soggy bottom. <laughs> no, we had a little bit of a soggy bottom. We had a little bit of a soggy bottom, and the Australian ratings board. Uh, rated a Castlevania Advance collection. Oh my my, is it real? Oh my! You know, go ahead and show you this one. And you know, one source <laughs> looks good. Looks real good. Looks good. One source reporting something like this is just safety in rumors, right? Yep. We've got a second source, baby. Oh, we got a second source. Uh... This is real. This is real journalism hours. We're corroborating sources. The Taiwan Ratings Board has just rated Castlevania Advance Collection for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. There it is. Well, well, well. So that means it was it was first rated in Australia. It's rated in Taiwan. There was also a momentary leak of a ratings board uh, rating in Korea recently. Uh, now. What does this mean? Do we think it's do we think it's all three? It must. Yeah. It's not just going to be two of them, right? They wouldn't do that. Uh, I feel like a collection the, by the phrase collection, it's got to be at least three. I don't know if I've ever seen anything called a collection that's just two. I'm sure I have, but I think off they... the top of my head, why would you call it a collection if it's just two, right? That's true. It feels like a word that doesn't apply to two. Could be mark, but sometimes it's just marketing speak. Right. It's a collection because there are two games and a bunch of extras to commemorate. But I think it'll be all three. Um, man, that would be lovely. And listen, 
as much as as much as we'd love to think that they're going to add a bunch of bells and whistles to this, mm-hmm. it's probably just going to be an upscale with borders. Cool. That's me. that's what they do, and that's fine. Cool with me. That's fine. I can play it on my Switch with Bluetooth audio. Damn, we're really living in the future, GBA. Yeah, right. A GBA game on a Switch with, with wireless Bluetooth audio? audio. Wait, are you telling me I don't even need a headphone adapting connector? You to don't. play it, and if I didn't bring it with me, I had to play my games on mute. You can play dongle free, Anthony. Dongle free? What games am I? Without dongles. A Rockefeller? Imagine. A Getty? Dongleless. <sighs> um, this is very exciting. Uh, we talked when we when this rumor first came out about. Look, I love all these games. Aria of Sorrow. Perfect Castlevania. I'm very excited to play. Perfect Castlevania. Also, I mean, Al- Alucard as a Japanese gov- supernatural government agent. Yeah. Arukado? Come on. See, I played the Castlevania games here and there as a kid. Mhm. But then as an adult having watched the Castlevania show, I'm so deeply invested in Castlevania now <sighs> that it is it's a big switch. It's a oh god, and it's so good. I mean, it's like people slept on them because you know the GBA at mm. that time. It's like if you were you know if you were a little older, like you maybe had a GBA or mm-hmm. you knew somebody that had a GBA, but it wasn't like something you brought around with you all the time. It wasn't like connected to you the way it would have been if you were like a little bit younger. And people slept on these games, man. They fucking slept on them, and it was like three little Symphony of the Nights coming out all in a row. I'll yeah. tell you what, if they want to be real nice to me, if they want to be real nice to me, they'll put the DS sequel to Aria of Sorrow, they'll put Dawn of Sorrow on there too as like a little bonus treat for me maybe. It could happen. It could happen. It won't, but it could, but Fingers it won't. Fingers crossed. I'm very excited about it. Obviously, we, this isn't technically confirmation, but there are multiple sources that makes it seem likely. And um, these are ratings boards, too. These aren't these aren't retailer leaks. Yeah. Which make these, I mean, look, sometimes things get rated and they don't make it to market. Yeah. But this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Very exciting. Um, I do want to talk about this PS5 stuff. Yeah, let's talk about it. I don't know if you're up on this, but uh, a couple weeks ago, you know, we reported on the first hardware revision of the PS5. This happens all the time Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the life of consoles. This doesn't mean like a physical uh, uh, redesign. It doesn't mean that it looks any different Mm -hmm. uh, or or feels any different. It just, you know, oh, instead of using these two chips, we can put one chip in there. Oh, we can pull out this fan and use a little bit of a cheaper fan, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, a YouTuber, a tech channel that I watch sometimes, Austin Evans, got his hands on one of the new PS5s and pulled it open um, alongside an original PS5 because it was lighter. He noticed that it was 300 grams lighter according to the product weight. And he was like, I want to know what's different. Yep. Opened it up and found out a huge chunk of the heat sink was removed. There's also apparently some simplification to the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip. Mm-hmm. But the big thing that, oh, and that thumb screw. Yeah. We do like that thumb screw. We do like that thumb I wish screw. I had that thumb screw for the, uh, for the stand. Yeah. But found out that there's like the 300 grams that was missing was 300 grams of copper heat sink. Got excited that, it, he, that his theory was right. Mm-hmm. He was like, I found something. I got something. I got a sclusi. I got a sclusi. Got a little excited and over overplayed it, overstated his sclusi. Yes. Uh, said, this is a worse PS5. Ooh, big, big statement to make. Over, big if true. Big if true, but, you know, uh, over t- he was like, over time, less heat sink could mean that, you know, it's going to run hotter. Different fan could mean, like, you know, more dust and stuff. This could, over time, over time, this this will probably run worse, knowing what we know about electronics. And it could run worse right now. He ran heat tests, and he was like, yeah, the new one runs about two degrees hotter. This is probably a worse PS4. Started the whole fucking internet 
just arguing back and forth. New PS5 get bad. Don't order those new PS5s. They're getting worse. They're taking the they're taking down the quality. Scalpers were charging more for original ones. They were listing that they had an original PS5 as opposed to a new one. There was a lot going. Austin started getting look. Austin started getting the doxing and the death threats and all of that stuff. Not, Don't ever do that not, to anyone. Not cool. Not cool. Um, Only dox Nazis. But people were like, wait, we're just saying things now. We're all just saying things. Yeah, yeah I would never. I would never dox a Nazi. I would never hit a Nazi. But also, like, if I saw you doing it, I probably wouldn't tell. Um, so people were like, is this real mm -hmm. is this real like is this something we need to worry about and it became such a thing that the boys had to get involved the, the big guns the boys the big guns being digital foundry digital foundry who do this all day every day mm -hmm. love digital foundry mm -hmm. digital foundry who will record 10 hours of matching game footage on two different consoles and play it back frame by frame to see which one is skipping frames. So you know, even though you can't tell, <laughs> you know you have the better version. We love Digital Foundry. We love Richard Ledbetter. And Richard Ledbetter got in there and popped open the PS5, did some tests, and said, nah, man, it's fine. Here's what probably happened. You make your first run of something, uh -huh. you over-engineer it to be safe. Yep. If we're putting a million of these out and we know there's going to be a shortage and we don't we haven't had these out in the wild, we've run them in the we've run the tests in the lab but they haven't been in people's living rooms. Mm -hmm. Put too much heat sink on it. Yeah. Go crazy, go nuts. Uh-huh. But as you learn more about real-world tolerances of your hardware and as you optimize things and as you look at how much headroom is left, you can change it. You can change it. Yeah. And it seems like what they did was, was they got rid of unnecessary extra. That's it. Which, of course, probably was a cost-saving measure. Yeah. But if it's a cost-saving measure that doesn't change functionality for the end user. Then have at it. Then have at it. Then have at it. You know? Uh, because that first PS5, that 300 grams, was straight copper. That ain't, that ain't cheap. No. You, that that's not cheap for a couple of reasons. It's not cheap because number one, you got to buy all that extra copper, <laughs> uh, and number two, every PS5 you ship is another three hundred grams heavier. Yeah. And when you're shipping pallets and pallets and pallets, that makes a huge difference. A PS5 is so heavy. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. They said that they just started profiting on the units, which mm -hmm. is very quick for PlayStation. And very quick considering <laughs> who has them. Who has them? Who has them? Have you plugged yours in? Since Monday, no. <laughs> Not since mm. we talked about it on Monday. Um, but usually Been it busy. takes, that's okay. Usually it takes PlayStation three, four years and like a slim model, mm -hmm. you know, a cheaper, more plasticky model to actually start making profits. So for them to get to profitability within a year, mazel tov. Mazel tov. Um, so there you go. It looks like no matter which PS5 you don't have, you're fine. <laughs> Speaking of profit, I want to talk about this. Oh, this is such I a- I want to make a jump. This is such a you story. When I found it, I was like, I was like, Sage is going to be just as entranced by this as I am. This is very much a, an us story. So forgive us. This one's just for us, BBs. Um, not, not us coming from families of hoarders. <laughs> so- no personal connection to these stories at all. Just what? find it interesting. We just what? find it interesting. It's mental illness. We just find Isn't it interesting. It? Um, a YouTube duo uh, who goes by the name of uh, Cheap Finds Gold Mines posted a video. Yep. Where they found an abandoned house, a hoarder's abandoned house, and they went and they dug on in to see what they could find. And what did they find, Anthony? 
they found $100,000 worth of vintage games in this hoarder's abandoned house. A A lot of this stuff in case, in plastic wrap, Everywhere. Now, what's interesting about this, like, you're probably focusing on, look at all the games that they're pulling out. No, no, no. Look at the condition of this house. Because that repetitive GIF is going to short circuit my brain. Uh, Let me see if I can get mine working now. Yes, I can. So, the house is rough. You know what? I'm going to give a content warning before we get further into this house, if I'm honest. It's icky. Yeah. So, uh, Corbin and Amy, the the couple behind Cheap Finds Gold Mines, uh, they... They said there is a difference between what they do and people who are called pickers. Mm -hmm. They're normally not pickers. Yeah. Um, What they do is they go to like, you know, storage unit sales, garage sales, swap meets, Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And they're always looking for deals on things. They don't just specialize in games either. They they do this stuff for everything. They're those kind of people who flip them. They've got I bet their eBay store is fucking jumping, I'm sure. Right. They're those kinds of people. Pickers, according to them, are people who go into like abandoned places, shut down places, uh, dumpsters, dumpster diving, dumpster diving all that yeah. stuff is what are people who are called pickers. Now, they said, because we're not pickers, we did not know what we were in for when we went into this house. We went in and we were like, oh no. It's nasty. Um, everybody is questioning the validity of this. From that one GIF, sure, question the validity of it. There's a three-part series on their YouTube Showing channel. Showing the whole house. Each video is 30 minutes long. I don't think they can they can fake this. They would have had to buy so many games to hide in this house. And they would have had to fucking trash this place. I mean, they could have found a real abandoned house, I guess, yeah. and brought a bunch of games into it, but I can't imagine how that would be beneficial to them, considering their content, they are not pickers. Um, they, they said the that once they got in use. there, they they didn't go in with gloves, they had shorts on, they were wearing, like, regular shoes, because they're not used to this stuff, but they said as soon as they saw how much stuff was in this house, they were like, we can't go home and change. Somebody else is going to jump on this. So somebody else is going to jump on. That's a box of dirty ass games. Um, they said there were tons of games scattered about the house, but the pair were mostly only interested in factory sealed finds. So they like left a bunch of already open games there in the house. If the games were already open, they they basically Ooh. left them because they're like we're we are not people who deal predominantly in games, mm-hmm. and we're not pickers. We don't want to clean this shit. And we just want to sell the un, like the unopened stuff at a profit, probably to collectors, like in big lots. Anthony. Yeah. Now this is people who actually do this kind of content is a massive, massive community on YouTube. Now I figured it would be. I have not looked into it, but I thought you might have. So there are people who do this for every category. Typically, a lot of it does fall into that like dumpster diving category. And I remember my older siblings would go dumpster diving when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause we, we were poor kids. Uh, and that was a fun weekend activity that our mother would drive us to. Uh, but anyways, the ones that baffle me the most. Yeah. There are makeup dumpster divers. No. I hope that that term is not offensive. If anybody knows, please do let me know. That was like coming from a poor family, what we called it growing up. So like if anybody has any insight on that, I am open to hearing it. Absolutely. I mean, I know when we used to do it out back of like office buildings and electronic stores, like we always called it dumpster diving. Right. I know free, like people I knew who are freegans who like went to like big grocery stores. Yeah. Uh, they always called it dumpster diving. Um, no, we are not talking about those who eat from the garbage. We are talking about people who um, go behind like retail stores and pick up. Yeah. Although I just mentioned the, freegans and they do that. But yeah, that's uh, not the general topic. Yeah. So, I just. Blech, uh, mm. Yeah. Um, so there are people who do it for makeup because makeup is one of those industries where like. Oh, if the markup's insane. Touches it. Yeah. It has to be thrown away. Right. And the markup is like 800%. Yes. 
So like if somebody returns a blush and they took the tape off and they didn't use it, they still throw it away. They have to by regulations for makeup. As someone who used to work in makeup and see so much makeup getting thrown away particularly, because it was coming in from returns. Particularly in this year, in this time of human history, I cannot imagine going into a literal literal dumpster mm -hmm. and grabbing makeup that could have been on somebody else's face yeah, and putting it on mine. Right. Uh, big stores have started burning stock now. Yes, there are also people who will flood their dumpsters with stuff. Um, it's so wasteful. It's so wasteful. A lot of a lot of places are making are making like states are starting to make laws about getting rid of dead stock and old stock. Mm -hmm. um, there was that big story that we reported Amazon. on about Amazon, where Amazon will just will just trash stuff at a certain point because yeah. it's they lose more money than selling it at a deep discount. Yeah, so they just trash it. It's very wasteful. We live in a very wasteful society, and, yeah. uh, and on one level, the people who do things like this are leveling out and taking advantage of how wasteful our society is. Totally. And look, man, back in the day, I used to find like networking cards and shit back behind office buildings. Like you would get, you could find some good stuff, mm -hmm. things that you needed that you didn't want to spend money on. I wouldn't, I couldn't dive into a dumpster now. I couldn't do it. Same. I'm, I have an old, I have an old man's body. I, I also have an old man's body. We, we have old man bodies. I would problem. get, I would get the. I shouldn't, but I do. I would get all. I would get every letter of herpes if I did that now. <laughs> oh, no. Every letter of herpes, all the way down the alphabet, a Gregorian, Gregorian alphabet, all the way into Cyrillic. I would have. That's just my my immune system. Um, but this community is just like any other community on YouTube, where they're like they're sharing tips, they're sharing hauls. Uh huh. The hauls. Oh, the hauls. There's a there's a morbid curiosity in it for me. I've watched I've fallen down the rabbit holes of watching the halls where I'm just like, wow, they really did find five thousand dollars worth of makeup in a trash can. But oh my god, it's trash can makeup. It's like and that's there's so a, tough. We should live in a society where people have to do that. We and should. there's there's a fine line between like for me, the other reason why this stuff is kind of a little whoa, like off putting for me. Is like I said, like I mentioned, I kind of come from a family of hoarders. It comes from uh, it comes from a level of anxiety. It started with my uh, started with my grandparents who survived mm -hmm. the Holocaust. They like you know, so all their shit was burned. Right. And so when they came when they came to the states, everything everything they kept was like in a box and it was labeled and you didn't throw it away if it was useful. Like mm -hmm. this is a perfectly good wire hanger from the dry cleaner. Why would you not use it to hang a shirt? Yeah, same. Like that kind of stuff. And you know, so I'm always like where where is the line between we found this and it's valuable mm -hmm. and I just think this is valuable and I'm going to put it on eBay. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's going to sit in my house for three years. Right. Um, for people who are asking some of these questions, uh, Corbin and Amy were tipped off by uh, the family of the person who owned this house. Uh, apparently this was... Uh, this was a woman named Stephanie who's in the video. She says that the property was her uncle's it had been in the family since 1965, uh, and when her uncle fell ill in 2019, she helped him move out and was like, oh my gosh, this is what the house looks like. And they had to, you know, if you want to sell this place, you've got to clean this place. My God. And so having somebody like, having people like Amy and Corbin come in and be like, we can help you find what's valuable here. I gotta be we can honest. trash the rest. I would I would just be like demolish it. I'm so sorry. I understand that's also a great privileged thing to say. I ca I can't I yeah. can't imagine restoring that. I mean even just to have what's wild is even just to have somebody bulldoze that property, you have to get it cleaned to a certain just so they can survey it before they tear it down so they know that it's like how to tear it down safely. So even then, like, there were no walking pathways in that house. Um, what's interesting is, uh, you know, the the cheap find team, Amy says, like, hey, you know, it's not just, like, it's not just the dollar amount value on this that's interesting. It's, like, you can tell by the condition of the house, but, all, but then the condition of the games, mm -hmm. how much the games meant to this person. Right. Um, and... Like, yes, we're going to be selling these games, but hopefully we're going to be giving them to a home that appreciates them as much as this original owner. And we're putting these things back out into the world. 
and it's pretty cool. Isn't that wild? All that is the sealed stuff. All that is the sealed stuff. Absolutely wild. Anyways, I thought it was really interesting. This is Trey Anthony found. And damn. There are three there are three parts of these video to this video. If you want to go watch them. They're all half an hour long, and I just I just had them running in the background last night. They are fascinating. I've only watched the first one so Absolutely far. fascinating. It's very interesting. Um jumping into some uh some non non game related well. Well, to be honest, I do want to. I do want to. We can transition using this. Did you know that they are making a live action twisted metal TV series? I heard about it through this story as well. I feel like I must have heard about it before, but yeah, when I saw it, I was like, "Do I remember that?" But now there's a reason for it to for you to, for it to stick in your memory. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of these things are in development for a long time, and, and a lot like, of them never come. But the Twisted Metal series just got themselves Captain America as their lead. Anthony Mackie is going to be John Doe in the live-action Twisted Metal series from Sony TV and PlayStation Productions. He's going to be the Milkman. Yeah, that's awesome. He's the amnesiac Milkman. Yeah, that's awesome. Absolutely. In, I mean, come on. Come on. Come on, that's great. Yeah. Uh, and they do say it's going to be they're not taking it seriously. It's going to be an action comedy. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will have its serious moments. Yeah. But it seems like they just, they want to do something silly and over the top and actiony. And I think that's the perfect way to do it. Hell yeah. Twisted Metal is the most terminally 90s thing. It is. And to do it any other way than tongue in cheek, I don't know. I don't know why. It's never one that I would have thought to make into a live action series or any kind of series for that matter. And that's as somebody who as a kid loved playing Twisted Metal. Yeah, I, I think... I played the fuck out of Twisted Metal. It's, but I never would have asked for this. It's Yeah, it's one of those ones that's kind of... It's fallen out of... It's fallen out of like a lot of like the public memory mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or our social memory. But like there are a lot of people... They were big fans of Twisted Metal. Yeah, that was the game my siblings and I played. Yeah. yeah. Twisted Metal was, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was it was corny as hell. I yeah. mean, even as a teenager, I was like, this is this is corny as hell. But it was fun, you know? It was like unabashed fun. Like, vehicle combat. Hey, vehicle combat. Remember when that was everywhere? Yeah. So I would say Twisted Metal Black on the PS2 was probably the one I played the majority of. I know we one. had the original beforehand that I had played from like, yeah. But it was before my time. Yeah, no. Um, I don't think when twist when the first Twisted Metal came out, you were you were literally an infant. It I came think. out the I think it came out actually before I was born. It Maybe came out it, in nineteen ninety five. It came out in ninety five. Okay, it so. came out in ninety five. I was also born in ninety five. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. I think you were an infant. But I think you were an infant if you were born. I was born at the very end of ninety five. So, yeah. She's the second coming of Twisted Metal. She is <laughs> Sweet Tooth. Um, I think this is cool. I, I have fun with it. I love that they have Anthony Mackie. We love that, Anthony Mackie. This is all very good. Um, I want to also talk about some Star Wars news. We love Star Wars news because we do love a Star Wars news. Now we know that Sung Kang mm -hmm. is in the Obi Wan Kenobi series. So, so. Han Solo from the Fast, Fast and, and the Furious. Furious. Han Sol Dash O is in the Obi Wan Kenobi series. He gave a little bit of an interview, and they're allowing him to drop some tidbits at this point, and he dropped a very good tidbit. That's a big. That's a big bit. I don't know if that's even a tidbit. They said, "Give Sung Kang a lightsaber." They said, give that boy, give our good boy, our perfect son who can do no wrong, give him the saber. Give him the saber. I love this for him. I love this for him. Do you think he will constantly be snacking in space? I hope so. I hope so. I hope he's just, I hope he's constantly, I hope he's constantly popping 
those those weird little vegan sausages that Luke had in his bento box mm -hmm. and like and like Ray's inflatable broccoli bread. Yeah. But he's, you know, just little bits of it like monkey bread. God damn. He's getting a lightsaber. I'm fucking hyped for Obi-Wan, I feel man. like it's then because Han is obviously an ode to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So then it would be an ode to Fast and Furious is ode to Star Wars. It's got to come back around. It's got to come back around. Um, I think this is great. I'm very ready for Obi-Wan. Of course, we have so we, we have some time. We, we're waiting, but... I'm so hyped I'm for so it. I'm so hyped for it. Ian um, McGregor. Phew, Ian McGregor. Drop the skincare routine. Oh, it's being a millionaire? Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh it's it's having been rich since you were 27 got it got it got it yeah, got, it, got it. it got it got it um in other good casting news let's talk about the wednesday series uh this of course is the netflix adams family series centered around a uh older wednesday super, than we've seen as a supernatural detective at school awesome awesome uh, I have Riverdale everything. I am. I'm going to go in neutral. I'm going to go in with, uh, an enthusiasm for as a huge Adams family fan. I am not ready to like let go of my enthusiasm for it, but I'm also going to go in with low expectations. Look, I'm, if, I'm balancing. If you're looking at the Adams family and you're looking at the evolution from the original Charles Adams cartoons to the, 60s live action TV show to the Barry Sonnenfeld movies. There is an evolution and a change to each of those. They all bring in new themes. They all bring in a new tone. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with this. Is it, is the log line and the plot structure a little, a little Riverdale-y? Yes. Yes, of course well, it Sabrina is. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but like uh, Netflix is Sabrina. Fine. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. There yeah. we go. But here's the thing. The casting has been Catherine Zeta Jones as Morticia. Ugh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Jenna Ortega is going to be Wednesday Adams and like. Hell yeah. She looks so great. Luis Guzman is going to be Gomez. Right. And we're like, what's that going to be like? I understand. And we know. He was a little different, but they've taken this place of, of, of Gomez being hot and. Uh, like smooth in a way that like we'll see and maybe he'll pull it off maybe he's maybe he's the smoothness is just in him you mm -hmm. know what I mean like Raul Julio is a strikingly handsome dude yeah but like maybe Luis Guzman just shows like hey if you've got if you've got the real love and you've got the moves and you've got the fucking you you, you you're willing to to be a great partner maybe that's what you know what i mean like right. who knows that's what makes up a gomez that's what makes up a gomez. gomez um but so we have uh we have some other casting mm -hmm. uh we know that isaac ordonez is going to be pugsley adams okay. victor dorabantu is going to be uh, uh is going to be thing george bercia is going to be lurch i don't see a fester yet but we got a very good piece of casting news. A very, very good piece. And that is a brand new character mm -hmm. who is the basically the headmaster of whatever academy Wednesday goes to. Mm -hmm. Is also Morticia's childhood rival, her frenemy. And she's going to be played by Gwendolyn Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Because who else would deserve to be a rival to Morticia? Gwendolyn, six foot two inch queen of our lives, Christy. Yes. Is gonna be. Yeah. Morticia's rival and Wednesday's principal headmaster something. Yeah. Her, Gwendolyn Christie and Catherine Zeta Jones just chewing furniture and coming at each other. I love it. The tension. It's going to be so good. That is so, so it's good. It's going to be so good. Um, I'm into it. I love it. I think it's wonderful. So 
I googled George Bercia, the person who was playing um, um, uh, Lurch. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's a very unique casting to play Lurch because yeah. like, I picture the '60s Lurch. Sure. Which is a tower of a man. Yeah. Um, so I googled George Bercia and images. I want. I want. Are you ready for hot Lurch? Are you ready for hot Lurch summer? Okay, so super hot Lurch. Are you ready no for, for for Lurch thirst? But also, everything on here is about his divorce? Oh, that's... What happened in court is unreal. George Bercia, who shocked... Uh, Carolyn Maruta? I don't, I don't know who don't any know of these people are. Yes, I did it video. I'll say... But if you, but here's the thing. I don't know anything about that. And I really, I don't know anything about that. But if you look at these pictures Are they of him. Are they couple vloggers? If you look at these pictures of him though, look at his brow line. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it look makes at sense. His, look at his forehead. You look at this image right here. Look at I'm that. Just like, ah, yeah, that makes When you sense. shade this right here, uh huh, that's Lurch. That's going to be Lurch. And it, hey. Yeah, like if that's he's, Lurch. If he's hot Lurch. I'm willing to think about it. I'm willing to. I'm willing to entertain the idea of a hot lurch. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm already thinking about it. You like a sexy Frankenstein. Of course I do. <laughs> you love a sexy, a sexy Frankenstein Simon. type, huh? Yeah, Frank, sexy Frankenstein's monster. Sexy Frankenstein's region of France. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a sparkling monster. Um, so I think this is. Ex I think this is exciting. I'm. I'm looking. I don't remember when you started saying that to me. He's well, been saying you like a sexy Frankenstein for a long time. Sexy to me. Frankenstein is a type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've I've often said sexy Frankenstein, but you do like a sexy Frankenstein. I'm trying to remember who it was about. There was another Matt like Smith. celebrity. Was it Matt Smith as the doctor? Was that who it was? No, you've called him a sexy Frankenstein, and that's fair. But Matt Smith's not really. I'm a I'm a David Tennant girl. Yeah, I forget who it was. That's a know. sexy anyway. Frankenstein. Hey. We want everybody to love a sexy Frankenstein if that's what they're into. Uh, you know who? El you know what else you're into? Not to tell you what you're into. <laughs> Go on. You like a Batman? I do. You like a Bruce Batman? I do. Did you know that tomorrow's Batman Day? I did. Happy Batman Day to all who celebrate. Happy Batman Day to you. Um, and also with you. Uh, DC is doing some fun stuff for the Batman Day, mm -hmm. uh, including. Batman the World. Ooh. This is, uh, this is a big graphic novel that comes out tomorrow for Batman Day. That is 14 different creative teams from 14 different countries doing mm -hmm. 14 different takes on Batman. Mm -hmm. Should be a fun, uh, a fun graphic novel. Yeah. I like it. Um, they're also uh, putting out a Batman comic on Webtoons. Like, I think this is very fascinating. Webtoons, of course, no, you know, known for sort of lighter stuff or Laurel Olympus. Yeah, romance stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, mostly, what they're known for is independent stuff. Is quite simply, those are the things that have blown up on webtoons. Yeah, it's independent comics, which is awesome. Absolutely. And something that they are putting out on webtoons is Batman Wayne Family Adventures. I the art style I'm I, obsessed. I love this. I love this. They put up the first few last week, but I think they're putting up the rest for Batman Day. I'm so excited. Um and this is very cute. It's about Batman, Damien, Alfred, and Duke. Yes. Just being a family. Batman, it says, Batman needs a break, but with new va vigilante Duke Thomas moving into Wayne Manor and an endless supply of adopted, fostered, biological superhero children to manage, yes. Bruce Wayne is going to have his hands full. But being a father can't be harder than being Batman, right? A Batman family slice of life comic. Yes. I'm in. As someone who has um, been doing content centered around indie comics for a little bit now. Yeah. Um, Watch her on the Mad Cave Studios channel every Wednesday. Hi. Uh, I have come to have such a pre an appreciation for like 
the art style of indie comics and the art style that steps outside of DC and Marvel. Obviously, yes. there's a bunch of different art styles within DC and Marvel, but there's also a huge differentiation between superhero comics and the vibe of superhero comics. When you get into these, yeah. like, I had never read Slice of Life comics oh, before. I love a Slice of Life I comic. I had never read a Slice of Life comic. So I good. grew up on Marvel and DC, predominantly what, DC, personally. To... to Next time I see you, I'm going to hand you five volumes of Giant Days. And you're never going to read it, but it's so good. I've got such a stack of comics I'm working through. I'm working through Nottingham right now. But I love the... We're doing it. I, I, lo I, I love what you're talking about, about this sort of like their house styles, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Less and less these days, but, you know, there is a style that's associated with the mainstream superhero comic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you look at things like some of the more leaning towards slice of life stuff... Uh, in image comics mm -hmm. or the stuff that Boom does and Boombox and there's this almost classic illustrative animated style mm -hmm. that's very popular right now in those indie comics and it's so fun to see the Batman family sort of in that style uh, and in this slice of life style right now. I'm going to pop it open here. Oh. oh. I guess we'll, we'll, be, be right we'll be right back. We'll be right back. So here's, you know, this is a style that we normally associate with slice of life and romance, you know? But I love it. Look at this cool, look at this cool daddy Bruce. Look at this cool daddy Bruce. I love, I love him. And this, this Alfred. I, I think this is so great. Fucking Damien. Cute. Fucking Damien. Just a little guy. Just a little guy. Fucking Damien. Hell yeah, dude. Um, so I love this. This is a little bit of what's coming on Batman Day. Um, very excited. Very excited. Uh, HBO Max is going to be releasing uh, ten, the 10 part Batman The Audio Adventures, mm -hmm. which is the Batman scripted podcast. I believe it came out on like Audible or something first. I mm -hmm. can't remember. But it's going to be on HBO Max. I'm wondering how they're going to do that, if it's just going to be audio with like a Batman logo behind it or something. Right. Um, but that's kind of fun. I've been wanting to listen to that. Uh, and then uh, Cartoon Network is going to be showing a new episode of Teen Titans Go and the Lego Batman movie for Batman Day. Uh, the Batman Fortnite zero point number one comic is coming out. A lot of Batman Day stuff. A lot of Batman Day stuff. We do have one more piece of comic news. Uh, related to the Bat family, and I love this. Nightwing 87 plays out as one continuous image. This is amazing. So Tom Taylor is, of course, writing on Nightwing right now. We love Tom Taylor. Uh, Bruno Redondo is the artist on Nightwing right now. And this is such a good... It's side-scroller Nightwing. It's dude. a side-scroller continuous Nightwing. There are no, there are no panel divisions... I mean, there are, but it's cleverly using the environment and the drawing as panel divisions. Batwoman, uh, Batwoman used to do this a lot, but for single page layouts, this is, you can see this is sideways, yeah, so but this is five pages of the comic continuously side by side. And obviously, you know, they're going to be like the, all the word balloons and everything, but this is such an undertaking. And I hope, I hope they release like a gatefold edition, mm -hmm. like a zigzag fold out edition, or like a print. You can buy it as like a continuous print. Yeah, I hope that. I hope that we get a continuous print because I think this is beautiful. This it's, looks lovely. Um, and you 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 really can't tell, but if you go and check it out, the the previews are up on all the comic sites. Mm -hmm. If you go and check it out, this in full size. The line work is just striking. It's, it is. It's Bruno Redondo is is an amazing artist, and this this must have taken so much planning. Yeah, I enjoyed this. Uh, I can't even say panel, but this part of the yeah, this isn't even much. part of the main. If you like, that's just the bottom of the page. Yeah, everything that's actually happening is, is up, up here. here. I love that. Look at this. Ugh, so good, so so good. Oh my goodness. I love a comics. Let's end on one last thing. Because we're running out of time. It's already 9.30, BBs. BBs? It's already 9.30. And it's 9.30 on Montero release day. You're so right. Lil Nas X, who has been 
doing the greatest marketing for an album that I have seen in mm -hmm. forever. The gender reveal I'm pregnant video that he did. Lil Nas X is doing the Lord's work. He's crushing Ooh, that it. Might be. That's not for me to say. Crushing it. But if you live here in LA, you might have seen some billboards up. A little gift from Lil Nas X to us. Damian Wayne. No. <laughs> um, this is a billboard that says, are you single, lonely, and miserable? You may be entitled to financial compensation. Visit welcometomontero.com with this weird <coughs> clip art. Photo. It's got this weird, cheap clip art billboard style. Do you miss the real America? Visit welcometomontero.com to see how we can take our country back. The, just the detail of like Montero looking like it's cut and pasted. <gasps> Like they like they stole somebody else's clip art. So good. Um, the Did the people who are gonna go visit welcome to Montero .com based on this billboard. So good. Perfect. So Precious. good. Show um, them the next one. Do you hate Lil Nas X? You may be entitled to financial compensation. <laughs> visit welcome to Montero .com. The best one. The best one. Gay? You may be entitled to financial compensation. Visit <laughs> welcometomontero.com. Right out front of the Hollywood Starbucks next to the Madame Tussauds. Yep. That is dead. That is smack dab in the middle of Hollywood. The absolutely popping part of Hollywood. <sighs> so fucking perfect so good they all have a qr code on them i love the different approaches did to you it. notice did you notice the emblem and what the emblem is no i can't there it is look at what that emblem is that's a butt i did not he I tried to make it look like it. but it looks like an inspirational star logo but that's a butt that's a butt in the air i had not put that together i was like Am I supposed to know something about them? So good. My so goodness. good, Lil Nas X. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, once you get to the site, impeccable. Just for the sake of Twitch. Just for the sake yeah. of Twitch. But that's art. I think it's great. Here. That's art. Yes, it is. We love it. No notes. No notes. Whatsoever. We love Lil Nas X's marketing brain and marketing team. Hell yeah. Also, trending on Twitter right now is Prince Phillips will remain sealed for 90 years. Prince Phillips will? Will, will to remain sealed. Yeah. Oh, I got, I missed the S. I got Prince Philip will remain sealed. Finally, now that he's dead, we've captured his spirit in a bottle. And we're going to seal it for 90 years. But every Prince 90 Phillips years. Swill. Every 90 years. A that hero will be born. They and they must like... reseal Prince Philip. <laughs> I thought they were going to like vacuum seal. Into his. Anyway. Okay. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that made that misread. Prince Philip's will will remain sealed. Uh, I don't know Why? Prince Philip will. Yeah, I could see how if you were reading that quickly. I could see how if you were reading that quickly. They're gonna seal him in resin. Okay, so first they're gonna cut him in a bit of Mod Podge. Okay, mm -hmm. then they're gonna take tissue and they're gonna do the weird, freaky Halloween decoration craft. Okay, then they're gonna coat him in like a plasti dip mm -hmm. and call it a day. Call it a day. Call it a ninety years. Call it nine thirty. Call us done, BBs. Thank you for coming by on this. The day of my GameCube's birthday. <laughs> uh, thank you to everybody for the lovely birthday wishes on behalf of Anthony. Oh, thank you, BBs. There were many lovely ones at the beginning of the show. Much appreciated, I hope Pickles. Celebrated accordingly. We um, it had nothing to do with us being off on Wednesday. I'll tell you that much. We love you very much. Thank you for starting your day with us. Of course, by showing up, you have already done us the greatest service you can watching the show. We make a show so that you will come and watch it. But we also want to shout out some of the BBs that were here for the first time that have supported us through things like subs and donos because uh, you also help us make it possible to keep doing this show. So thank you. You good little beans. Anthony's birthday was on Tuesday. It was, yeah, it was on Tuesday. Uh, Killer Cross 223 and Iron Perfy, thank you for the follow. Mike... 
Mike gifting too many subs. Mike gifting so many subs. How dare you? Uh, Morger X, Jeff one three two, Vicky Sicky six six six. Thank you for the follows. Fifty four Aqua Snakes donate nine sixty nine, saying nice. Auto Anatomies donated fifteen bucks for Palm Pilot accessories. Thank you very much. The Infamous Fall, Shadow Fighter six nine four, Sin thirteen, Groovy Deadite. Thank you all for the follows, Groovy Deadite. Thank you for the host. That one Moon Kid with the subscribe tier one. Welcome. You're trapped here. You can't leave. And for three months in advance, if I recall correctly. Woo! Uh, tearing Babby. Uh, Crazy Rain, a B Falcon. Thank you for the follows. Uh, flannel Fries with the resub for 11 months in a row, saying 11 Flannel Fries coming up on that one year, coming up on that BB Versary. Auto Anatomy gifting five subs. Pastor John Michael with the follow. Kurt Laurelton with a hundred bits showing love. Fifty four Aqua Snakes with four hundred bits giving the birthday. Both I uh, both did me and the GameCube, you know. Together, as a family, as a family. Uh, Self-aware can opener, uh, resub for 12 months. We got a BB-versary. Woo! Happy BB-versary, self-aware can opener. Uh, TNMAR with the resub for three months in a row. That's six months total, 100% business carboni. That's right. Uh, lots of kittens resub for six months. Uh, the Captain Awesome resub for nine months. G Rex with the tier one sub for six months in a row. Thank you so much. And C Anthony Lopez, thank you for the follow. I do believe Mike got crazy again at the Mike! last moment there. Mike, quit it. I keep telling you to stop. Does, you gotta you gotta stop because the show's stopping. But hey, just because the show stops doesn't mean that this has to stop. Baby, the you're so right. And before we get into where we're going to be on the internet, we have to talk about failed saves. That's where we're going to be. And Tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific, it is the campaign finale. Not the season and not the show. Yes, the season. I mean, yes, not just the season. But also the campaign. Not just the season, not the show, but the campaign finale. This is the end of our third season. Three seasons of campaign have been leading up to this moment. Uh, this is going to be a very big episode. It's a very big deal. Come and join us at 7 p.m. There will be more failed save. Your cast will be back. You do not have to worry. We will return with more failed save. I have um, I have something else scheduled tonight for business. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no! Into a wall. Uh, so we hope that you will come and join us. It would mean the world to us. It's a very, very special game. And also, because we're going to have quite a few weeks before we start our new season, you have plenty of time to go and catch up. You can catch up in podcast form. That's right. You can catch up on the VODs here on YouTube, or you can catch up, or the VODs on YouTube or here on Twitch. Uh, please do that. Yeah, uh, we have it. It's available no matter how you want to catch up. I, I personally believe if you're going to catch up, it's great to jump in on one of the video formats because we do do it on Twitch and it's it's fun to see all of us goofing together. I agree. Uh, but I think if you wanna if you wanna power through campaign one and see what it's all about, jump into that podcast version. You know what I mean? You got a little time. You got a little time. Come and join us tonight. But other than that. Where can they find you, Anthony? Oh, my stars and garters. Where can't they find me? I'm everywhere on the internet at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch, where I am at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. Also, because today is Friday, there is a new episode of my science comedy podcast, We Have Concerns. I do it every week with Jeff Kanata, uh, where we find new science stories, uh, present them to one another for the first time and then improvise based on what they mean and how they make us feel. This week we're covering the Ig Nobel Prizes, Ooh. which are the yearly science prizes for the weirdest achievements in science. Awesome. And there are some very good ones. Check that out at wehaveconcerns.com. Uh, and also you can find me very often this week at my local boba shop because I have been needing a lot of caffeine, but I'm not telling you where that is, and you don't, but you could find me there. I just need caffeine. Okay, all good, bud. Or in my bathtub playing Genshin Impact. That's true. Uh, you can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream on my channel. Tomorrow we're doing a big community day. We're building a, a park all together in Minecraft. How we're, cute. we're building a fighting pit uh, to fight each other. Uh, also, Witch Child K, happy birthday. Thank you for spending part of your birthday with us. Happy birthday. You can birthday. find me this afternoon over on Smosh Games. We're doing uh, one last hurrah of celebrating Shane's birthday. We're doing a, a, a tiered cake list. 
I'm just going over there to mukbang eat cakes. Yeah. That's what's happening on Smosh Games today. Uh, of course, tonight, obviously, on Failed Save. Other times, I'm on Smosh all the dang time. I'm on the D&D channel. I'm on Mad Cave Studios. I am around. She's around. She's I around. I love you. Oh, and hey, if you're a patron, you get a, you get a special bonus clip today. You do. We got to go film that because I got to go location scout for secrets. For secrets. We'll see you soon, BBs. Oh, and one time on the internet on Sunday. It's true. One time on the internet comes back on Sundays. Anthony will be guesting over there. We are going to be talking about the beginning of YouTube. See you soon. Bye, BBs. Bye.